Welcome to the deleted scene from Sunday's Sermon on the Sacraments. In our time together, we talked about the role symbols play in our lives. As followers of Jesus, we believe baptism and the Lord's Supper are sacred symbols, tangible rituals that remind us of deeper, intangible realities. Jesus took existing rituals in the Jewish culture of his day, changed them, infused them with new meaning, and instructed his first followers to maintain those practices wherever they went. If you don't really know about the connection between the symbol and the reality, or if you don't care about the intangible reality, in either case, the symbol is relatively meaningless. But if my marriage matters to me, and I understand how this ring symbolizes my marriage, then this can serve as a pretty powerful reminder. And the same is true of baptism and the Lord's Supper. We focused on the Lord's Supper during our time on Sunday, and this deleted scene you're watching is all about baptism. The verb bautizo in Koine Greek, the original language of the New Testament, is one of the verbs that meant to wash. It was typically used uh, for that specific kind of washing as ritual wash, washing. At that time, washing was not just an issue of cleanliness, but also uh, the religious life. And in the last few centuries before Christ, the Jews used baptism for any person who converted to Judaism from other religions as an initiatory rite to accept them as authentic Jews. And just before Jesus' ministry, a guy named John started to use baptism in the Jordan River for the conversion of people who were already Jewish. Now, if we stop and think about that, that's, that's rather strange, isn't it? Why would such a person need to be converted if they were already Jewish? Well, for John, this was a calling to a radical change. He was calling the people to make a serious commitment to truly live the justice and love of God. I think all of us know religious people, even Christian people, who need to be converted. And to be fair, there are many moments and days when I would count myself in that group. So, for John, the tangible symbol to seal that commitment to God, God's justice and God's love, was baptism. And therefore, he's now most commonly known as John the Baptist. Very good. Thanks for following along. I know video is a less uh, interactive uh, medium. Anyway, all four Gospels in our Bible talk about John the Baptist, and even Jesus submitted to John's baptism at the beginning of his public ministry. After his crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus told his followers to adopt baptism as the initiatory rite for the new community they were forming. The closing words of Matthew's Gospel are these. Jesus is speaking. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples, that is, make learners, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded, commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So in the community that would come to be known as the church, anyone who converted would submit herself or himself to be baptized as a proclamation. Thanks to God, I am a renewed human being. I'm a follower of Jesus of Nazareth, who is the Son of God. I renounce my old way of life. I identify myself with Jesus. And henceforth, I'm going to be a part of his group, his family, this church. Now, at most United Methodist baptism services, the person being baptized is actually proclaiming very little. When you think of baptism at First United Methodist Church, What's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, that's it's usually a baby being baptized, right? And whenever it's a baby, the baby is not particularly proclaiming anything, let's be honest. 
but the parents are. So this is how religious practices change over time. The first, first people to be baptized were converts, making that declaration we talked about. God has made me a new person. But what do those people do if they have kids? Do you then have your child baptized? And many Christians in church history, including the United Methodists, have said, yes, let's absolutely baptize our babies. It's not done so they've got some get-into-heaven ticket. Uh, Like we discussed a little during the worship service, baptism is not magic. It's a declaration of what God is already doing in a person's life, whether that's oneself or one's child. There are a few strengths to this saying yes uh, to infant baptism in the United Methodist denomination and other denominations. For starters, if baptism is a sign of initiation into the church community, infant baptism communicates that this child is definitely a member of our community from day one. Kids are not half citizens of the church. They're full citizens. The United Methodist practice also highlights another truth. This baby isn't doing anything. But we are here to say that God is at work in his or her life. It's God who makes us his sons and daughters. That ultimately does not rest on any of our shoulders. We work together with him. but He is definitely in charge of the project. All of our talk at last week's worship service on June 2nd about holiness, in the baptism of an infant, we see God saying, I'm the primary one in charge of this life. I'm drawing this little one to myself in love. Do you really think you're any different just because you're a few years older? Infant baptism should be a sign to us that pressure is off. Yeah, following God takes effort on our part, but ultimately he is the strong one. He is the one making us like himself. We are broken people, and he makes us whole. We are incapable of pulling ourselves up by some spiritual bootstraps. We're dependent upon him in everything. And that's a big part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, We are the type of people who recognize that we are a mess and God heals. We are weak and he is strong. The next time you see an infant baptized, see yourself in that baby. We are weak, that that child and I. But God is strong. Just like John the Baptist taught, we're all in need of a conversion, whether or not we're particularly religious people. That can get lost a little bit in infant baptism, but it doesn't have to if we remember that original symbolism. For those of us baptized as infants, we can say, I was baptized as an infant because someone, maybe one or two or Who knows how many generations ago, someone converted. They were baptized as an adult. John the Baptist, Jesus, and my ancestor would all tell me that I need to be converted too. I need a new heart. God, that is your department. Renew me. Grow me more and more each day into the person you have created me to be. Thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful.